Hey, Res family, Pastor Daniel here, and I'm with uh, Elder Jeff Pombach. And uh, we are uh, going through our church uh, cultural values over the course of this year. And uh, today we're going to be just taking some time to look at the the value of identity, uh, to talk about it, um, to to really just kind of discuss from Elder Jeff's perspective uh, why this was such an important thing in our cultural values and, and why um, – we included it and wanted to really uh, make it a foundational value in our church and then talk a little bit about personal application. So, um, Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for taking some time. Uh, so there's this first value in our cultural values. Uh, it's the value of identity. And our, our little statement in our values says that believers are God's treasured possessions, sons and daughters of the king. Mm. That we must realize this new identity by living dynamic, spirit-led lives with entirely new priorities and standards. Uh, you and I have, have talked before, uh, Elder Jeff, about uh, identity and, and, and why understanding that you're accepted by Christ is such a big deal for you mm. and in your personal journey uh, coming to Christ um, so I, I, I think I know why identity is, is really, you know, pertinent and valuable to you and, and your story, but, but maybe tell, uh, the listeners today, like why that was such a big deal for you to, to, to realize how accepted you were by God. You know, what's interesting is, um, I'm, I'm a pretty driven person. Mm -hmm. There's not a time in the day that I don't have a plan for something. <laughs> and I, I grew up from a family that didn't have very much money, very much things. And I saw unhappiness, you know, and relationships and things. And I thought, oh, if I just become a success, whatever, whatever success means, right? right. I mean, <laughs> we laugh about that now, but success to me meant that when I got to college, I would excel in whatever I did mm -hmm. and I would get a fantastic job mm -hmm. and I would be the best at whatever I did. Right. And I and I, that, that's what drove me to be yeah. the best at whatever I did all the time. What I found was it's never enough. Mm. And I've, I've excelled in a lot of things in life, but I found it was never, ever enough. And what would happen is, uh, and I'm in the ag business. So, so later in life, um, I excelled being a ag consultant, a tech guy for plant nutrition and fertilizer and things like that. And well, I'd find when there'd be a big change in our company and here I am going down this great path and I'm excelling. But when that would change, it would affect my identity because right. I was no longer top of the heap, mm, mm. you know, and, and I found other things in my life. You know, I found when I failed at something, then it was very hard hitting, depressing to me that I wasn't the best. I wasn't, I wasn't on top of my game at being a husband. I wasn't mm. on top of my game at being a dad. And so over and over things were attacking my identity because my identity was always to, to be, be the best, be better. You know, um, we joke in our, we joke in our family and I'll, I always had sayings like, if you're not first, you're last, you know, right, it's a right, movie, you know, right, type right. thing. And, um, if you're not up, you're down and things like that. So, I've lived out what a disaster it is to not know what your true identity is. Mm. And so in Christ, and I, I have to remind myself of this. I, I pulled out a bookmarker out of my, my journal that I carry with me. And I give these out. It talks about your, who you are in Christ. And these Bible verses remind me over and over, you know, John 1, 12, I am God's child. Mm. Wow. You know, so when I, when I go into a situation like, I've got God on my side. Right. This is great. Right, you know? right. And yeah, you know, I have a, a similarly, uh, I think even even after kind of surrendering to Christ in my in my 20s, I think there was still a hmm. a portion in, in my 20s and, and late 20s, early 30s where I was still very driven to be successful by yeah. some sort of standard and, and felt like I needed to do that. And and I've certainly witnessed what you're, I think I've lived what you're talking about. I've, I've witnessed a lot, hmm. which is, you know, I'm reminded of when Jesus talks about, you know, anyone that listens to the things that I'm saying when he's talking about the kingdom and kingdom principles and builds their house on this is like mm -hmm. building your house on a rock. Right. But if you don't build your house on mm -hmm. this, you're building your house on a deck of cards, yeah. you know, sand. And um, so many people that I know have, have built a framework of their identity on some type of human endeavor yeah. and then it failed. 
Yeah. And they wonder, oh my gosh, my life's over. Yeah. You know, or or I'm worth nothing. Or and uh, man, identity for me when it, when I finally kind of got my head around the fact that it's not performance driven. Mm. Yeah. Oh wow, what a weight off my shoulders. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a lot easier to be even bad at my job, to yeah. do a bad job, to make mistakes and yeah. go, my identity hasn't changed. Right. To to know that you're not ever on your own. Mm. It's not about all the gumption you can muster up and what you have. <laughs> I mean, Christ who created everything and whom all things hold together is in me. Right. It's right. so it's not it's not all up to me. What what does it look like for you personally to be spirit led? You know, we talk a lot about, and I, and I answer this question for uh, folks from time to time of like, how do I how do I stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Mm. You know, how do I how do I know when the Holy Spirit's talking to me, and um, how how do I how do I listen and stay obedient to the mm. Holy Spirit? I mean, what does that look like for you as an elder? To me, it has to be a practice. Okay, um, I, I guess you call it spiritual disciplines. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. You know, for example, I. I need that quiet time with the Lord because after about seven o'clock in the morning, things aren't quiet until I, I go to bed after dinner. Type right. deal. So I get up early and that's my time for prayer. That's my time for Bible study. And I have to be regimented. Otherwise it, it doesn't happen. Mm. Um, but mm. also um, I like the Bible first. It says, be still and know that I'm God. God. Yeah. And that resonates well with me because my mind and my life isn't very still. And so I have to build practices in my life um, throughout the day to remind myself just to stop right. and and think and pray. And and if you get in my truck, you'll see I've got Bible verses stuck all over it and <laughs> things to remind me because it's easy for me to get caught up into what's going on. For, for me, one of the things is that like, if I notice it, I, I, I want to press pause and go, why did I notice mm. it? So if I notice, if I feel like this urge to tell someone something, to encourage them, to say a word to them, to stop them, like any of those things, if I notice that, I go, why did I, where is that from? Yeah. Was that this quote unquote random thought that I came up with, a, a human endeavor, a creation of my own mind? Or was it something that the Lord is prompting me for? And and I I kind of have a little litmus test for that. And, I, and I'm not always the, the best at it because sometimes it would require more courage than I have to, to be obedient to it. Uh, but usually, if it came out of nowhere, I, I go, is it encouraging? Is it edifying? Yeah. Is it God glorifying? Mm. Is it something I wanted to do? And if the answer is yes, 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 no. Mm. So it's encouraging, it's edifying, it's God glorifying, but it's not necessarily something I want to do. Uh, it's got a good chance of of being from the Lord, yeah. you know. Um, and and so you know, someone will pop into my head, and I, where did that come from? And instead of just questioning where it came from, I go, let me call them, let yeah. me pray for them, mm. let me text yeah. them, right? Like, why were they there? Right. I wasn't thinking of them. Yeah. And and and, and I, the more I do that, the more I respond in obedience mm. to those types of small promptings, the more I'm actually recognizing God moving in even bigger ways. Yeah. Um, i give you a quick example that I just think is funny. Uh, I had really been talking to the Lord about um, kind of lamenting mm. that the workout partners that I'd had over the course of the last uh, two or three years had pretty much at this point, all moved out of state. Mm. And I've, I'd, I'd failed trying to get another guy to come in with me. Mm. Um, he had been kind of sporadic and then he got hurt and he, he was going to be gone. And so I, my fitness had really struggled. My motivation was really low. And I recognized the need for accountability and just community in, in working out and hadn't been able to find it. And so I just had this idea of a friend of mine who's a pastor who moved back into town. And I thought, oh man, I should, I should text him and invite him and essentially get, I, we own the gym, so I'm, I'm going to get this guy a free membership. I could probably swing a free membership with this guy. Um, so I did. I was just like, oh, I, th- I think God wants, you know, and I didn't, I didn't think about all the implications of it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't why was I thinking of this guy? You know, none of those things. Just, okay. And I, and I texted him a, a nice message and everything. I asked, invited him to do it and everything. And, and I got a long pause. <laughs> I got well, in about two hours or so. And it, it was kind of a reluctant, like, yeah, yeah, I think I need to do that, you know. And so this guy starts working out with me, a uh, pastor friend of mine, which is a really dear friend, great guy, very out of shape right now. And um, so we, we work out about four days. It's the fourth day. That's what he tells me, the end of fourth workout. This is phenomenal. He says, uh, Daniel, hey, I want to really thank you for this, for inviting me and helping me. He goes, I've really enjoyed 
Well, no, let me take that back. I've really appreciated it. I haven't enjoyed it. You know, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. You know, he's sore. And right. I, said, I really enjoyed it. He goes, but let me, let me tell you what's so interesting. I was in my prayer time about two weeks ago uh -huh. and I was talking to the Lord about how uh, I can't hike anymore because we moved from from up north and there's nowhere to hike. It's close and I can't just walk out my door like I used to and hike trails and, I, and my my fitness is running really bad. And I was just asking God, God, what do I do? Would you just would you tell me I'm supposed to go join this a, a globo gym? You know, I mean, I don't what I don't know what to do. And his phone dings, bing, and it's my text message. Yeah, how cool is that? Yeah, right. That's awesome. I didn't know anything. Yeah, I just thought, oh, I think I think I'm supposed to text this guy. Yeah, wow. You know, I can tell a, a story about that. Um, just yesterday, I was driving along. And I drive all day long and see customers, mm -hmm. farmers. And I'm driving along, and I thought about this man. I recently had a meeting with him. But his name came to mind twice. Mm. And I thought, you know what? I just need to call him. Yeah. And, and so I called him. And my customers know that I'm going to talk to him about God and Jesus. I mean, right. they just know that that's just part of conversation. Right. And I called him and I and I said, man, how you doing? He, he said, oh, I'm okay. You know, and we talked for a bit. And, and I said, well, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to call you. You got something you need to, I can pray for or something? Is there something going on? And, and he just got silent. Mm. And he said, well, uh, I, I can't really tell you right now, but yes, I need prayer. Mm. And so I... I said, well, I can tell you this. And I, if you're on a sticky note on my dash, you're getting prayed for all day long because I look at it and I remember to say a, a prayer for you. I don't close my eyes. I'm driving, but I'm going to say a prayer. <laughs> and, and I can tell you that God's shown me how he's real and alive and when we respond to him. But I have to have, I have, to have my mind in the right place to right. respond to him. I have to be... I have to be actively seeking him. Right. I have to, and, but I know from experience when I'm not walking in the spirit and how, when I'm not filled with the spirit, how dissatisfying life is, how anger creeps in, how other stuff creeps in. So I think about what do I want to be filled with? Mm. So I want to be filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control, you know, the fruits of the spirit or, do I want to be filled with anger, um, fear? Mm. Uh, I remember when I first got a job in this industry, I was hired as a tech guy, kind of like what I'm doing now. But my job was to go around and teach train and train people on a line of products we have. Well, I had to get up in front of crowds and speak about products. And heck, I was scared to death in college to say anything in front of anyone. Right. And the, but it was my job. But I was a new believer and. I knew I was a new creation, mm. and I think it was Second um, Timothy one seven. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Mm. And so when I would get up in front of that crowd, I, yeah, I was nervous, like I still am some today. <laughs> but I get up there and I would look at those people and say, "How can I love them right now?" Mm. And I've got the power of God inside of me. Mm. So, so yeah, it's just so um, just. Walking in the spirit is, is we, we all can kind of walk in our own way, but when we walk in the spirit, we see the difference in our life. And then we see how we impact other people's mm -hmm. lives. I have this little saying that's taped to my monitor in my office. It says, have you given the spirit time, attention, and space to speak mm. to you today? Yeah. Right. Cause, cause so often I won't I'm yeah. too busy. Too busy yeah. for God. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. And I know I, I, I think about when, um, oh, I love praying for people. Yeah. And so I think God's blessed me with putting people on my mind. Mm. And maybe that's, he does that to an elder. I don't know. I think he does it to a lot of people, but, right. but all, just all the time he's putting people on my mind. He'll put you on my mind. Mm. He'll put um, just people in the church on my mind, right. you know, Miss Jessica, like for some reason this morning, you know, I, I prayed for Miss Jessica and I, I thought about, um, Lauren in Spain, mm. and, you know, prayed for her and, and just randomly throughout the day, it's like, Oh, well, it seems random. Yeah. It seems random. <laughs> yeah. But at, I should say at, at just random times throughout the day right. that in it, and I praise God for that because I believe that's how he works through us. I do too. So. 
Elder Jeff, thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Res family, we love you. Thanks for paying attention and hanging out with us. Um, until the next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. <laughs>